Hello! Today I'd like to discuss Amnesia the Bunker. It's a horror game where you awake in a World War I bunker, but there's something here with you. You have to explore to find a way out, while avoiding the same fate as the corpses you find along the way. Special thanks go to Frictional Games for the review key. This review is based on about 25 hours of gameplay, and two completed runs at normal and hard. All opinions and footage are solely mine. You're all busy people, so let me answer your most pressing question first. Are you going to enjoy it? The 30 second spiel is that this game is a horror experience, but unlike most horror games, it doesn't rely on jump scares or similar artificial methods to scare you. You're faced with an enemy that moves in logical ways, and players that pay attention will be rewarded for that. You can't expend resources to make things easier, but everything comes at a cost, and you have to weigh how much risk you're putting yourself in. This is a game that will appeal to players who enjoy psychological horror experiences and appreciate intelligent enemies. If that sounds like something you like, then stay with me and we'll go deeper into the details. You play the part of Henri Clement, and together with your friend Augustin Lambert, you're both serving in the French army during World War I. The tutorial introduced in the mechanics takes place during a battle in the trenches. Augustin saves your life, and later on you save his. On the way back to your lines, you get caught by an artillery barrage and everything goes black. You awake in a medical facility, there's nobody around. But soon enough you come across the gruesome remains of other people and discover that you're trapped in here with whatever is responsible for those corpses. The game mostly tells its story by notes you find. Those from your own character and Augustin are voiced, but all others are text. It's important to have played the tutorial at least once because it sets the background for these notes and they won't make as much sense if you haven't got that. Photos you find also hint at gameplay mechanics and points of interest. The entire game takes place in a single bunker. It's divided into several sections and one of the rooms is safe as long as you lock the doors. That's your base and there's a trunk you can store extra items in. But to escape you have to carry out expeditions to find important tools like larger backpacks and other resources that you'll need. And that means exposing yourself to the monster. The fundamental premise is very common to many horror games. You're faced with an unbeatable enemy. At best, shooting it buys you a bit of time. It's all about avoiding it while trying to find some way to escape. A key difference between this and other horror games is that the enemy behaves in logical ways. There's no forced jump scares where the monster just teleports to you. There's no forced encounters other than the final one, though there are some situations where there's only one path and it's very likely that you'll face the monster. But even then you can still be clever and avoid it. In many ways this is similar to Aliens Isolation, and people who like that game will probably also enjoy the enemy in Amnesia. But one improvement over Aliens is that the enemy isn't automatically teleported to whatever section of the map you're at. This is helped by the smaller side of the bunker versus the space station in Aliens. But the result is that it feels less forced and therefore more immersive. So if the enemy is intelligent, how does it detect you? The answer is noise and to a lesser extent light. Everything you do makes some noise. Your footsteps echo in the holes. Sprinting is almost guaranteed to bring the monster to you. You have a flashlight, but it needs to be wound up and that makes noise. Moving boxes to get around obstacles also makes noise, and the louder the noise, the more likely it is to attract a monster towards you. Not surprisingly, the sound design in the game is very good. Things make noise in exactly the way you might expect. For example, carrying something and hitting another object or the walls will make noise in a way that you'd expect. Dropping something makes noise, but if you crouch and get close to the ground, it makes less noise. It's even worth cleaning debris in corridors that you use often to avoid making noise when you step on them, but of course at the cost of making noise while doing that. On the other hand, the monster also makes noise. If it's close, you hear it scrabbling in the tunnels, and you'll hear it moving about if it's in the halls. Sometimes you can simply move away from it and explore another section, but there's quite a few occasions where you have to hide in closets or under tables in the dark hoping for it to go back into the tunnels. Sometimes you'll get caught and the thing will tear your face off, but usually it's because of logical reasons. 
It might have seen you go into the closet, or you might be wounded and leave a trail of blood. It never feels arbitrary. Fundamentally the gameplay is based on balancing the risk of attracting the monster versus the benefits of scavenging. You have an open map and you can explore the bunker however you want. Once you finish it, you'll realise that there's some items that you must get in order to finish the game, and the game does railroad you towards them. But while you're playing, it doesn't feel like you're being railroaded. It simply feels like you're exploring a location, which speaks well for the design of the game. Generally the gameplay is very flexible, and you can experiment to find what works best for you. For example, there's some locked wooden doors that have no keys. You can use a grenade to blow them open, or you can move an explosive barrel and shoot the barrel to blow it up, or you can use a stone brick to bash it open. Same with locks. You can shoot them open, grenade them, or use a stone to bash them open. Later on you'll find bolt cutters to get past them. Another mechanic along these lines is the generator. It lights up the corridors and discourages the monster from roaming about. But it takes fuel to power and that effectively puts a cap on how long you can go scavenging. To keep the lights on continuously you'll have to make trips just for the purpose of bringing back fuel, which of course exposes you to the monster. Or you can choose to let the lights go out and just rely on your torch. But it makes noise that attracts the monster and in the dark it tends to be more persistent in looking for you. You're always balancing the risk versus the reward. But on the other hand, you can also manipulate the game systems to your advantage. So say you have to throw a grenade at a door, you know it will attract a monster, so you can take the chance to explore another section knowing that you'll be a bit safer for a while. Or you can lay traps by using some of the barrels around and take advantage of the monster's rampaging nature. The controls are based on mouse movements and also aim to be immersive. So opening a door involves clicking on the door and pulling the mouse towards you and maybe having to lock it. Opening a cupboard involves lifting the latch and opening the door. All this is based on real life movements. At first it can feel onerous, but these mechanics also play into the psychological horror aspects of the game and add flexibility. So you can choose to open the door a tiny bit to see if there's something on the other side. It's not difficult to open or close a door, but doing it when the monster is chasing you is another matter altogether. And again everything makes noise, so if the monster is nearby, opening a door or moving a chair might bring it towards you. There's time spent and risk involved in a way that you wouldn't get if you just pressed the mouse button to open a door. But the monster also isn't magical, just because it spotted you doesn't mean that you're going to die. You can run away from it with a good chance of getting away and if you plan correctly you can make some alternate parts that you can use to avoid getting trapped. It all works in a very logical way. There were some points though when things didn't work out as well as I expected. For instance, you're told multiple times the rats are not attracted to burnt bodies, but I had multiple instances when the rats came back despite doing just that. I'm not sure if it's a bug, but it became quite annoying at this one body that you have to get past multiple times. Another odd thing was grenades bouncing. All bounce a bit too much, it normally doesn't matter, but it seems that there's this one passage where grenades either land very close to where you aim, or bounce very far. This is particularly annoying because there was a time on hard when you were expected to use gas grenades to get past rats, and the grenades would land too close or too far away. Usually items are permanent in the world, so you can't drop them on the floor at your base and they should still be there when you come back. But not everything, I noticed that cloth and meat disappears for instance. The final odd thing I came across was that one of the endings involves using an item you find to trap the monster, but despite trying repeatedly I found that the monster ignored the item, so I just wasn't able to see one of the alternate endings. Otherwise, the game played in a very logical and consistent manner. One interesting aspect is that the locations of some information changes across runs, which in turn significantly changes how the game plays, so the game has a lot more replayability than you might think at first. Amnesia the Bunker is an excellent example of a horror game. It doesn't rely on jump scares or set scenes, and instead presents players with obstacles, including the monster that you have to work around. There's many ways to get around these obstacles, and generally things work as you might expect them to work, which speaks very well for the level of care in the game's design. The noise and sound effects work particularly well. 
The game itself is pretty short and it should take a new player no more than 5 to 10 hours to get through the whole game. But the developers also added modding functionality which will allow players to create their own bunkers for other players to experience. The relatively short length of a playthrough should combine well with that. Overall I'd say if you like horror games, especially psychological horror games, then Amnesia the Bunker should be right up your alley. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.